In this presentation, we're going to be looking at Viewport 2.0, Maya's high-performance hardware accelerated display. Viewport 2.0 has the ability to take what traditional software renderers do and do a lot of those effects directly in hardware. Newly supported in Viewport 2.0 for 2015 are Maya in-particles, the particle instancer. We can support in-hair, in-cloth, as well as Maya fluid effects, paint effects, Maya's tune renderer, the projection shaders, the wrinkle deformer, all of this goes into making Viewport 2.0 a really solid tool that we can now use as our default rendering engine. Which is great because Viewport 2.0 has always done a couple things really well. It's been very, very fast and it's had lots of cool things that it can do for the visual quality of your scene. And we're going to use this scene that we're working on to kind of explore a few of those functions. So the first thing we want to talk about is performance with Viewport 2.0. It can do some really cool things. What we're going to do in this example is we're going to turn on vertex caching. So we're going to evaluate the deforming objects in my scene and turn those into a GPU-based vertex cache by switching that over to hardware. So we'll close this down and we'll play it back. So what Maya is doing is the first time it plays through, it's evaluating all the deformations in the scene, all the geometry in the scene, and it's sending it off to a vertex-based cache that's stored on the GPU. So the advantages of this is the second time the animation plays through, Maya no longer has to process any complex deformation. It just grabs that, mo uh, grabs that model off of the GPU and plays it back in real time. So it gives us this really nice speed improvement when working with deforming characters inside of Maya. So the next thing we want to talk about is some of the visual effects that Viewport 2.0 brings to the table. So obviously we've got some hardware shadows here happening. Viewport 2.0 has some really nice functions. One that I like a lot is the ability to turn on screen-based ambient occlusion. So as soon as I do that, we get these really nice little kind of contact shadows and these little grounding patches happening everywhere. It also has the ability to do anti-aliasing, hardware-based anti-aliasing. So you can see there's jaggy sort of happening across the edges of the surface and on the character's hair. So as soon as we turn on these 16 samples here, we're basically going to clean all that stuff up and make it look really nice and tight. So it's worth mentioning that Viewport 2.0 has the ability to work in a linear color space, which is exactly how I have my scene set up here. So you can see that we're gamma correcting the whole viewport with a gamma of 2.2. And I also am rendering out the viewport in half float. We have the ability to go up to full float if we needed. So by turning on the float render, it does two things for me. It first lets me work with EXR files or HDR files and not have them get clamped. So things like this reflection that's coming from a, a environment map on that water is getting nice and hot where that bright spot is. It was over a value of one. It also gives me very smooth transitions like on these clouds here that if I kind of pan around here on these clouds where I might get banding where there's subtle transparent effects and things like that. So rendering it out in float just sort of makes the scene feel a little bit better. And obviously if you're using any type of high dynamic range images for reflection maps or source maps on your, on your uh, textures, flipping over to float or half float makes a big, big difference. So the next thing we want to do is talk about the water here. So what I've done is I went and just have a simple blend shader in this water. I painted some transparency sort of around the shoreline using the 3D paint tool inside of Maya. And what I want to do is I want to get sort of something that I would do with a software renderer, which is a, a Fresnel effect, sort of a facing ratio effect, so that when I'm looking down the glancing angle of the water, it's opaque, and as I start to pan up, it becomes transparent. And obviously we're not getting that effect right now. It's still really opaque in the middle here. So what we're going to do is we're going to use some utility nodes inside of Maya to build a simple little shading network that gives me that functionality. And again, this is something that I would do in software rendering. It's the exact same um, shading network that I would build in a software renderer. Viewport 2.0 can do it in hardware. So this is really cool. Let's go ahead and just um, blow away that texture map that I painted. That's that guy. And let's grab a node. We're going to grab a sampler info node. So this lets me query information. And I'm going to use this sampler info node now to drive the transparency of this shader. So this is really simple. We'll just expand this out here and we'll just grab facing ratio and we'll shove it into red, green, and blue. So as soon as we do that, what we have is the facing ratio, which is just a, a range of zero to one being reported back. So obviously the glancing angle is opaque and the top is fully transparent. Now, this zero to one range isn't really what I want. I want to modify that. So we're going to use a ramp node, another utility inside of Maya's nodes to modify that. And the ramp nodes, it's great. It's a, it's a real workhorse. I use it all the time to, to remap values. So let's just go ahead and hit the tab key and start typing ramp. We'll grab this ramp texture. 
we don't need the placement node for that guy. So if you double click on the ramp, you'll see that we've now switched this to be horizontal instead of vertical, so it gives you more room in the same attribute editor space to actually adjust the ramp without having to go to the full expanded view. So it's a subtle little change, but actually makes working with the ramps a good bit better. So you'll notice that the type of ramp here is, is a V ramp. So that's what is, this ramp is basically remapping, is V information. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and expand this guy out by hitting the 4 key to this nice big long list. We'll expand UV chord out, which is what used to be um, where that placement node was going into. And we're just going to grab facing ratio, and we're going to shove that to V chord because it's a, it's a V ramp. So now that we've done that, we can go back to this guy and just drag and, oops, let's go back to our blend shader, drag and drop this on the transparency. So now what we have looks exactly the same as when we shoved the facing ratio information in there. And the reason that is is because it's just a linear interpolation between black or zero and white, one. So we haven't modified this ramp at all. I don't want it to go fully transparent when I'm above. I want it to have a little bit of opacity in there. So I'll just drop that guy down. And I could maybe make this a little bit more abrupt, right? So it, it turns on to opaque really quite abruptly now. So now that we've got that working pretty well, what we really want to do is have this added into that other texture map that we made. We want to multiply these guys together. So this is, again, something that's, that's really pretty easy to do inside of Maya. Let's go ahead and just put this guy back down. We can expand this guy back down. Let's grab this guy. And we're going to use this guy to drive our transparency now. So we can double click on this and re-put this back into transparency. So that's, that's all well and good. We're back to where we were. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this ramp that we just set up and we just built to drive our alpha gain. Now, I'm going to have to switch the order because gain's a multiplier of the ramp. We're going to have to swap the, uh, the handles in a second. I could in introduce a reverse node, but it's actually faster just for me to swap the handles. So we're going to just grab this guy, put that to alpha gain. And like I said, I have to swap these guys. So we want that to be black and that to be white. So now as I start to kind of come down here, we'll put this to a value of white. We get that sort of cool facing ratio effect, and then we'll make this one a little bit more white. And again, we can, you know, really adjust this to make it be a little bit quicker. So it goes to that transparent effect really, really quick. But you can see we're getting this really nice subtle edge there. And then as I start to rotate up, the combination of those two maps together with that high dynamic range reflection, um, you know, it just looks really, it looks really cool. So let's go ahead and talk about a couple of other things look dev wise. So the way I actually set this scene up right now and the way we've been viewing it isn't the overall look that I wanted. I actually wanted it to be really volumetric feeling. So to get that, what I've done is I've actually put a fluids node inside that's covering my whole scene. So this is just one giant fluids node that's expanded across my whole scene. It's not dynamically moving. I'm just using sort of the volumetric rendering aspect of that fluids node to give me this really sort of nice volumetric look and feel to my environment. So it looks pretty sweet. Now, obviously, this is a node inside of Maya, so it's got full control over you know, the, the range of colors that that fluid's going to be using, the standard Maya fluids workflow. If I wanted to, I could just jump over to my outliner and let's go to this group and grab this guy, grab that fluids node. With it grabbed, you know, I could start changing its position, changing its scale, you know, just modifying it to get it exactly to look the way I want. But that was the end result that I wanted was sort of this, this sort of volumetric looking. So I'll turn it off just so you can see the effect. So that's without the volumetric and then this is with it, which, you know, just kind of gives that scene that, that subtle little tweak that makes it look a little bit better. So the last thing that we're going to talk about is support for particles inside of Viewport 2.0, and it's actually really cool. So Viewport 2.0 now supports particles, um, and it supports the ability to use the sprite particles directly inside of Maya as well as the particle instancer and build shaders and have the shaders show up in Viewport 2.0. So I'm going to show you a quick example of one that I already built. So I've got this ship crash that you saw earlier from the bullet demo. Let's go ahead and turn on our geometry over here, too. We'll rewind this guy. So here's our ship. You can Notice that it's got some emitters in there. And this is emitting out sprite-based particles the way I have it set up. And I've actually put a little setup on these sprite-based particles. So let's go ahead and just look at that really quickly. So we'll just grab those particles, 
We'll jump back into this node editor. We'll graph this guy. We can get rid of that. We don't need to see that. So what I've got here is I've got obviously my shader that's assigned to the particles, pretty straightforward. And in transparency, I'm doing, I have a ramp that's driving color, pretty straightforward, based on age, using the particle sampler info node to drive the color. And then what I'm doing here for transparency is I'm doing, again, I'm taking the sampler info node, age normalize, and I'm having that go into this ramp, right? So that's basically transparency. This all ends up going into the transparency channel of this shader, right? So you can see this guy all ends up going into transparency. So what we've got is we've got a ramp that allows me to remap how transparent those guys are based on age. So right now it's just a linear interpolation from life birth to death, right? So if I want them to die earlier, I can just make them more transparent earlier. If I want them to be more opaque longer, I can just use this ramp to adjust that. So the ability to visualize this stuff in Viewport 2.0 is really, really cool. So I'm taking the output of that, and I'm actually multiplying that times a fractal. So this fractal is giving me, and originally these would be sprites, right? So they'd be little square sprites. This fractal is giving me noise on top of it. So if we change the ratio, you can see that noise. And then I'm taking that output, and I'm multiplying that times another ramp, and this one's basically taking what would be a square shape and eroding it down with a circle ramp. So this lets me adjust the overall size and kind of soften the overall effect of that. So the end result of all these shaders, all this procedural shader stuff, is now viewable in Viewport 2.0, and I think that's really cool. So we can kind of rewind this guy, frame it up, we'll turn on the last effect that I want to talk about really quickly, which is... Uh, get those fluids turned on. We'll go in here and we'll turn on depth of field. We'll select our camera. We'll push that depth out a little bit. It's a little tight. And we can play this back now. So that's just a few of the examples of things that you can do in Viewport 2.0. Maya's high fidelity, high performance Viewport renderer.